This video or podcast is sponsored by Amazon Music. Thousands of podcasts and shows are made every day, from the conversations of Joe Rogan to the crimes of Morbid, and music by 50 Cents and Sabrina Carpenter. Amazon Music has the right taste in music, podcasts, and shows for you. With a growing audience of 52.5 million people using Amazon Music every day, you can help in a contributing way to benefit this new version of what was once called radio. With thousands of music and podcasts to listen to, you can listen to our podcast too, keeping things in the middle. And with you signing up, listening to one of our episodes on your app or on your computer, you can help my podcast grow to become an ever-expanding podcast group and become a new member of our listening on Amazon Music. Please use our offer down in the description below, and it would help me a lot because it would help me earn a little bit of money. Amazon Music, the site where you need to go to listen to podcasts, stories, and music that may have you bopping the whole night through. Now, let's get to the show. Yeah, the energy is very dim right now, and I know it is, because for what is the 12th season in a row, technically 13 seasons, the Indianapolis Colts have lost to the Houston Texans 29-27 to in week one of the regular season. C.J. Stroud had an impressive game today, and so did Anthony Richardson, but that one-handed grab near the end of the fourth quarter basically sealed the deal for the Texans as they were able to to beat the Colts today at Lucas Oil Stadium with, with Pat McAfee and Tyrese Halliburton, who, if you think about them, I don't know what it is about the two. I like Halliburton when he's not hurt. Now, when he is hurt and he is having issues and McAfee's having issues in his personal life, the juice isn't there. The crowd was into it today. The field people were into it today. It's not them. It wasn't anybody on the field at all. We have horrible luck in week one. Horrible luck. And it's not anyone's fault. It's not anyone's idea for us to think about this as being an issue. And if you hear stuff in the background, we're headed back out of town. But um, we are, as Colts fans, devastated. We're devastated like we always are every single year. Every single preseason is always a big uppity up. Sometimes we can go one and two, still have a decent season, season preseason, and then go into week one having such high hopes about the year. And then all of a sudden we go crashing down yet again as Colts fans. It's our life. We go crashing down for one week, and then next week we play the Green Bay Packers, which I'll give you guys a preview on that. As soon as we can, this is just more of an instant reaction type deal. The first episode of this podcast, and I will tell you, it's been a long time coming. I wanted to get this podcast out last year, but yeah, um, it's finally here. It's finally here, and it's here to stay. I was only a week, only three weeks or late because of school and that sort of stuff. Then I should got my fifth senior year in college and attempting to graduate. But um, as many of you know. The, we're going to get back to the game. C.J. Stroud today was 24 of 32 for 234 yards, way better than Anthony Richardson, who was 9 of 19 for 212 yards with two TDs, both had two touchdowns. Anthony Richardson had one interception that was in the third quarter. And I will say the receiving core today was led mostly by Alec Pierce, 
and Ashton Doolin, who are both incredible wide receivers. But Alec Pierce, many people have their doubts about Alec Pierce, and he really balled out today. He balled out today. There was nothing about him that was bad in my eyes. There usually isn't with Alec Pierce. He's one of the best big men wide receivers I've personally ever seen in the Colts for a long time since Dallas Clark, who played a similar role to him. And I will say that the people that criticize the Colts for reasons being that we are terrible at week one and we're never going to win another game. Like, this is not 2008. This is not like 2019, 20, 21, 22. Now, 2020, we were lucky to have Phillip Rivers. 2021, we just kept losing. And same with 22. But then we got Anthony Richardson, and he looked, for the most part, healthy. There was one play, though, where his body contoured back, and I thought, oh, crap. Don't tell me that Anthony Richardson just got hurt on the first game of the season by some big dude named number 97. I mean, it's ridiculous. No, I can't protect the quarterback that much. There were moments he was scrambling out of the pocket. More C.J. Stroud than anybody. He could get away. That's one thing I learned about C.J. Stroud today was he could get away with it, anything. You, he is like how Deshaun Jack. He's how like Deshaun Watson was years ago. Deshaun Watson for the Texans would just get here, get there, get here, get there, and it's like, oh no, there's a few defenders on the on my left eye. Let me go run to my right eye, throw it down the field for an easy completion, even if it's short. Anthony Richardson's big problem today was that there were times he couldn't get out of the pocket. There were times he got sacked. Not too many to speak of, but I will say that there were moments where he could have passed the ball more, and he had one heck of a throw earlier in the first quarter. A 60-yard bomb to Alec Pierce, which was basically the highlight of that game and then the second touchdown he had was to Ashton Doolin who today had one touchdown for 54 yards and it was incredible the D-line today was improved improved D-line and I hope it can stay that way and as I oh I just caught sorry about that I just caught on the right side of my eye Tom Brady's first ever appearance to Fox Sports, and now they're really hyping him up, and I hate Tom Brady. He's kind of a narcissist. But I was going to go back to the game. That kind of caught my eye. If you guys want to listen to that, listen to that. If you want to hear me talk, hear me talk. That's just kind of my thing. It's the most anticipated arrival for an analyst ever. But um, I will say, back to the game, Stephon Dix played a good game today. He had six yards. Only had one carry. And only six long yards. And so the big person I was really impressed with today was Joe Mixon. That boy can run. That boy can run. He can run. And he can absolutely rush up that field. But he tricked Indianapolis' defenses a few times. Even when he was on the Bengals. And I will say that Anthony Richardson and all of them today just couldn't even catch up. Big thing, though, Jonathan Taylor didn't get the ball either. I know I'm just spitting stuff out there like at random. But I'm just getting my thoughts out. It's been a crazy week one today. But Jonathan Taylor ran for 48 yards and should be running a lot more than that. A lot more than that. How did Joe Mixon outrun Jonathan Taylor today? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I said, as the old saying goes, run the damn ball. Just run the damn ball. And the Colts needed to do more of that and then some. And the Colts, honestly, are going to be going into week two next week against the Green Bay Packers squad that might not have a quarterback in um, in J- Jordan Love. And I will say that the Colts today were good overall. I mean, to put them in a grade range, I would say they were like a uh, about C. They were a C in spots and a B minus in spots. Texans were an A minus. Only because of the fact that you got a quarterback and an O line, Will Anderson on the D line, that 
when the D-line gets like a B or B- minus for me, as we'll be doing ratings throughout the podcast. I am excited, though, for where this Colts team is headed in the next few weeks, few months. And it should be a lot of fun because we're not going to have a lot of these moments again happen to us. And if we ever did have those moments happen to us, we'd be better prepared. Only thing is now, we got five quarterbacks on the roster. We can't lose the best one, but we have another good one in Joe Flacco. And Joe Flacco is a good quarterback. I'm not kidding around on that, but he will tank because that's exactly what we've done with these 40-year-old wash-ups that basically come in. And he should be playing for the Browns today. That's what I think. He should be playing for the Browns. And they're playing right now as we speak in the first quarter, 1456 in the first quarter. And here comes Dak Prescott and these overrated Cowboys. Overrated. Overrated. Completely overrated Cowboys. And Jerry's world isn't going to win in Cleveland. Let's just say that right now. And what they did to us last year was really bad. I mean, But think about it. C.J. Stroud, all these quarterbacks that come into Indianapolis have a better time beating our defense if they're rushing quarterbacks than those in the pocket. And in the pocket, we can sack, we can fumble, but the defense, I want to see more out of them in the next few weeks. It's week one, we get our popcorn out, we get our soft drinks ready, and we're just sitting down for the first time watching the movie. If I want to see another movie happen again... I'm going to have to see a better projection of the screen. I'm going to have to see better seating, better rows, better ways to actually watch the film. And that is exactly what the Colts team need to be doing so we don't have enough losses like this to carry on throughout the year at home. And we have 12 long years, and it's just kind of being a Colts fan. You have 12 long years of losing in the preseason. Or not losing in the preseason, losing in week one, my bad. Losing in week one. And I'm just going to say, good performance today by the Colts, but it could be better, it could be improved. And we're going to be going into Lambeau Field for the first time in many years. I don't, I think it was like 2012 was the last time we were ever in Green Bay. And that was back with Aaron Rodgers when he was quarterback on the team. And the year after they won the Super Bowl, I think I'll have to look that up. But we haven't been in Lambeau in a long time. It might have been 2018, too. We might have made it there one time. Lambeau Field in Green Bay, or Green Bay Wisconsin, is going to be where the Indianapolis Colts will face the Green Bay Packers. And hopefully it's called by me, Kevin Harlan. But yeah, uh, that does it for the... 10-minute take of the Indianapolis Colts and Texans. Final score of this game, again, was 29-27 to Indianapolis. I'm going to join Twitter Spaces and chat on some of these people's... Uh, actually, there aren't a lot of them. Oh, here we go. Just got to refresh this again. And on Twitter Spaces, they got a lot more analysis than I do. And so hopefully I can hop onto one of those before I have to go back to town. And go back to college again and finish that up. So we have 13 weeks left when my semester ends, which I'm really excited about. Back to life, I guess. Back to life. We'll see you next week. We'll actually have another podcast, college football podcast, coming out soon. And then we'll have a preview for the Colts game against the Green Bay Packers. And so that might be in a, this week, but I'll have to figure out when. So, thank you guys so much for listening once again. That's my little rant that I had for the Colts and Texans today. Hopefully we can rebound again in week two at Lambeau. And actually watch a better film. And instead of it feeling like the Emoji Movie, make it feel like Kung Fu Panda or something like that. Let's go Colts. Hashtag for the shoe. We'll be back at it again very soon. Have a good day, everyone. And go Colts! Colts!